So we're now recording Matt. Um, so Matt will start by talking about um, the public library system, particularly looking at Alamance County Public Library. Um, and this is again, this is a smaller group. Um, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute or drop them in the chat. I'll kind of monitor that as we go along. And also feel free to talk about your own experiences reading um, with public libraries, you know, right? Um, so it's a, it's a casual session. Uh, so Matt, you can uh, get started on your end. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Sam. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to participate today. Um, it's great to uh, get uh, asked to be involved with ULVLC. Um, I've been kind of a ULVLC spectator uh, <laughs> off and on um, ever since its inception. So it's an honor to be here. So thank you. Thank you for letting me join. Um, so as Sam introduced me, uh, my name is Matt Dale. I'm the branch manager of the Mevin Public Library. The Mevin Public Library is part of the Alamance County Public Library System. Uh, our main branch is located in Burlington. It's the main Memorial Public Library. That's probably the closest branch uh, to Greensboro. Um, if you were interested in obtaining a physical library card, uh, we also have a branch located in Graham, North Carolina, and another branch in Burlington at the, um, I think it's the Mako Bigelow uh, Recreation Center. It's the North Park. Uh, branch. Um, so yeah, so I'm here today to just basically talk a little bit about um, reading for free with the public library. Um, the first step to do that is just to get a library card. Um, so Alamance County Public Libraries, um, I, I did a little bit of, I did kind of a cursory survey of other local library systems. I believe we're the only local library system that lets you actually register as an online borrower. So you don't actually need to come into the library to uh, register a library card with us. Um, and so what I'm going to have Jenny do, Jenny's kind of my Zoom navigator because uh, <laughs> I don't have nearly the breadth and depth of Zoom experience that Jenny does. Um, so uh, if you want to is our screen being shared? Yeah. Okay. So um, over on the right, just click get a library card. And then um, you see the first option is register online. Um, so you can uh, click, I believe, on the library. Yeah. Uh, let's click on that link there. Um, and so this is the online borrower registration process. So if you're interested in basically getting an Alamance County Public Library's library card and on using it exclusively to check out uh, ebooks, digital resources, things like that, you can do that this way. Um, so we're just going to have Jenny's going to be the guinea pig. We're just going to run through. And once we've registered her successfully, um, we'll kind of transition to Libby. Um, but then if you're going to get a library card in person, um, basically all you need, you just need a form of identification with your photo on it and then something with your current mailing address if it's not on your ID. Um, and we've gotten pretty flexible. So a lot of folks come in, they don't have like a physical piece of mail or something like that, but can pull up a document on their phone or something like that. And we can use that to verify your address. Um, so, okay, awesome. So if you wanna go back to the website and we can show them how to access, that's just the catalog. Oh, okay. um, go back to the website. Oops, library home. Uh, yeah. And then so um, over there on the right, um, you can do click on download and stream books and we'll see if this will work. So this is just kind of the breakdown of the sort of uh, online resources that you can access with an Alamance County Public Library card. Um, and what we're going to look at first is just the Libby app. Um, so here yeah, or... you can, you can, so there are a couple of different ways you can access Libby. Obviously it's an app, so you can just download it to whatever device you read books on. Um, otherwise you can actually access it in your web browser. Um, if you just type in the web address, www.libbyapp.com, or you can just access it through obviously our webpage as well. Um, so go ahead and do sign in and then try and do with that OBR card number and then that four digit pin and see if it's still work. This is exciting. I have a possible new uh, place to check books out online. Don't you have like three, Jenny? Okay. I do. Have this will be like your fourth. I like it. <laughs> I have many library cards, yes. Okay, great. So that worked. That's awesome. Um, so that shows you, you know, you can obviously do this during this presentation if you're so inclined. Um, or, you know, you can wait till after, but that's the process um, to actually, actually register as an online borrower. 
Um, in terms of uh, materials, I think you're, there's a five item limit um, on your online account, and that's the same for library cards as well. Um, and again, at, if at any point you want to also start checking out physical materials, you'll just need to go into the library and get your physical library card. Um, one thing um, that Jenny just highlighted is you can place 25 holds. Um, it used to be 100, uh, and that just changed this week because I think we were the only local library system being that generous. Uh, most library systems only let you place, I think, four or five items on hold yes. at a time. Um, so we <laughs> we were yes, letting you awesome. check out 100 or place 100 on hold. Now you can put 25 on hold. Um, one thing, too, to keep an eye out for, this is a, hopefully a change that is coming down the pipeline. At a certain point, you will be able to uh, request items in, in Libby. Um, there should be a link or some sort of something to designate how to place that request. Um, there will be a limit on the amount of requests you can place, like per 30 days. Um, but just keep that in mind. That is something that we're working to add as well. Um, so if you want to, if you want to just pull up the LibbyApp.com as a separate tab, or you can leave that open, that's fine. Um, and then let's try and log in this way as well. So then you would do, do you have a library card? Um, you would do search for a library, and then you could do Alamance County Public Libraries. Yep, there we go at the top. Um, and then do sign in with my card, and then try that OBR number and then hit next, and then do that pin. Okay, awesome. and as that's just a different way you can get into Libby. Um, and then the only thing I found was a little weird with this is to sign out of the browser client, you actually have to delete your library card. So that just is kind of cumbersome. Um, but yeah, if you ever need to, you know, just read stuff on your browser, this would be the probably ideal way to do it. Um, so yeah, so once we're in Libby, um, it's a pretty straightforward interface. Uh, I recommend, I watched several videos on, uh, let's see, what was their website? Uh, resources.overdrive.com has good kind of in-depth tutorials. It seems like Libby is always adding features. Uh, one thing they recently added is a filter button where you can kind of search by preference. Um, so that's the three lines over on the left. You can kind of tweak oh, that. Cool. Um, and I, from what I understand, those filters are applied to like all of your searches. Um, and you can kind of go in and tweak, you know, genre, subject, availability. And one thing that has changed in Libby is Libby will start to, the nice thing is you can, if you have multiple public library cards, you can just add all those cards to your single Libby account. Um, and then when you do a search, it should prioritize. So like whichever library has the item available, it'll put that first. So if you want it, you can just go ahead and check it out at that point. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so it says they, they automatically display that option at the top. Um, Sweet. Does anyone have any questions? I know that was a deluge of information. So um, <laughs> I... I have questions, but do other people have questions? Because I don't, I don't want to dominate. I have no um, idea about this twenty-five. This limit. twenty-five load limit is That's so. Awesome. Like, I'm gonna, I'm trying to pay attention to this, so, so I'm not uh, doing it Ooh. in live time. But I will immediately be signing. <laughs> And it's um, and, and the online borrower account is really nice, right? Like that's a really nice feature. Oh, that's like Again, how I use it ninety percent. It's an acknowledgement that a lot of folks, you know, are are still for whatever reason, you know, more inclined to access materials online than maybe access them physically. So yeah, and um, so uh, Brown. I mean, I think that's a serious question. Like, can people out of North Carolina sign up for this? So so they they try. So what happens is our uh, our collection management librarian will actually go through the OBR uh, accounts every month, I assume at the end of the month, and she'll just look at all of the information to make sure it's, you know, copacetic. So yes, people from out of state do that. She'll just delete those accounts, um, basically. So And yeah. so, um, Jenny, you know, I know you have Libby already. So like when you sign up for this, does it just immediately go to your Kindle? Like, or, you know, like, is it through the so, same app? <laughs> 
so I will tell y'all how I have usually gotten things through overdrive is directly from um like the website like this instead of through Libby but I am just I just tested it just now so we'll see um let me go over here so I went back to this I checked this out so I could see um I'm going to click read with and then I'm going to try Kindle yeah okay and so it's just sending it to my Kindle so that's how I'm, I have a Kindle that's about how I do 99.9% .9 of my reading um, basically everything except comic books I read on my Kindle Paperwhite. Um, so that's how I send it. But you can read through the Libby app if you have it on your phone. Um, you can listen to audiobooks through that app. You can uh, read on, like you said, read on the read online. So there are a lot of options. Um, yeah, I actually listen to audiobooks on the Libby on my phone you know, um, and listen to it in the car, or like on my headphones and when I'm walking. Um, and then I usually use overdrive to send, like Jenny was saying, um, ebooks to my Kindle, but is overdrive going away, Matt? So it, it is. So basically, um, and especially as an app, I think the overdrive app has been discontinued because it's evolved into Libby specifically. So I think it's, it's, I, and I'm not sure if it's the case where if you actually search overdrive in an app store if it'll actually give you libby as the result but that's that's what has essentially been um created to replace overdrive and sorry brown um you can tell your out-of-state friends they can do this but just have them use your address I will. So as Sam mentioned, I have um, <laughs> I have access to a number of library cards for public libraries. No one in my family reads ebooks. Um, so I am from a family of big readers. And uh, I so I'm able to use like my sister's library card to download books because she doesn't need it for that. Um, and it doesn't have any impact on her ability to get print books or anything like that. So um, I have many many library cards mm -hmm. that i use to log in to libby but they all can go through libby because they're all through overdrive um so if you're in greensboro public library they use the um north carolina digital library alamance has a separate one some of the bigger um, systems charlotte has a separate one uh, i believe wade county has a separate one but a lot of the systems in North Carolina or through here, and it works like exactly the same. It looks just like the one we were just looking at for Alamance. And uh, one thing I neglected to mention about the, the OBR accounts is they do expire after two years. So if you want to um, basically renew your account, you would just have to call a branch and um, talk to circulation staff um, and just let them know, you know, hey, this is my name, this is my date of birth, like I have an OBR account, it's scheduled to expire, I just need to renew it. Um, so again, you can maintain that access without ever having to set foot um, in, in one of our branches. I have a question sure. that we did not prepare ahead of time. So through Alamance County Public Libraries using your card, I have done the creative bug classes mm -hmm. yep. is that something that i'd be able to do with yes it? so um and why don't we go back to the elements county public library's website and see if we can access it with that obr account okay um the only issue is and i mean this is this is true of a lot of public library websites they're not very well designed um for what i understand it's mostly because we're uh we're a division of county government and the county doesn't have a lot of incentive to actually create a really nice website for us um, so, uh, when you, I think, was it, was it scroll up to the top? Was it, um, research and learn? Was it, if you click that link, was it in there maybe? Um, no, just click the link. Don't, just the link. yeah, just click the link and then scroll down and see if it's in there. Yeah. Crafts yeah. and activities. Um, so I Jenny's going to demo. This is, a. Uh, no, that's not that's it. That's not the right No, thing. that's. Just keep scrolling down and see the clubs. No. So maybe one of the other ones. Yeah. Scroll back up. So if we can't find it, I'll maybe books and more. Yeah, you can try it. Um, 
this uh, program or system is called Creative Bug, and they it's kind of like Skillshare if you've ever used the Skillshare class. Um, they are like classes, like video asynchronous classes you can take for craft related things and creativity related things. Oh, sorry, e learning, maybe. So I've done them for like lettering. Oh, so scroll down, see, or click on see. see. Yeah, see if it's in there. Yeah, it should be. Keep going. Yep. Yeah, okay. there we go. So I want to, I just want to see if my library card number, my new one, will work. If not match, it could not be found. This happened to me last time I tried to log in too, though. I'll try it one more time. So it looks like, well, I'll look into this in case anybody's interested in this, but I did some lettering classes on here, like for hand lettering um, that were really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll look into it, look into it separately. Thank you. Thank you for Do they have like kid classes on there or is it? Yeah. And so that's another resource. Um, and again, I think it's one that you could access through um, uh, with an OBR account. Uh, are you familiar with ABC Mouse? Sam, are you familiar with that? Yeah. So that's one. Um, basically, you know, running through this, there's Libby. Uh, I don't know if folks are familiar with Hoopla. That's another one um, where you have, I think, a set limit of checkouts every month. And those checkouts can be, you know, books, movies. Um, a lot of comics on Audio books. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, and then we also offer access to the NC Kids Digital Library, even though we're not part of the, the NC Digital Library. Um, you should be able to access all of that stuff through the OBR account as well. ABC Mouse, it's kind of like, um, I think it's kind of like NC Live, where you can gain access, but you have to create a separate account. And once your credentials are verified, you use that account to actually log in. Um, so definitely experiment with it. And um, uh, Jenny will just put my email in the chat if, you know, y'all run into any difficulties or anything like that as you're kind of trying to access these resources. Um, please do send me an email because that's really helpful. I know I'm sure other patrons are probably having the same issues and they probably just haven't been brought to our attention. Um, this whole presentation is basically just a, a stealth library card registration drive. So I hope everyone who is here today just, you know, takes the time to register for an OBR account. And really, too, the nice thing about living in an area with, you know, a lot of different local public library systems is you can fairly easily get library cards. Like, you know, if you live in Guilford County, you can get a High Point public library card, right? You can go to Jamestown and get a Jamestown public library card. Um, you can go to Gibsonville and get a Gibsonville public library card. And if you're already on the way to Gibsonville, you can just go to Burlington, right, and then get your in-person in card as well. Um, so you can make a whole day of it if you really wanted to. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to that. think what, uh, and, and again, I just did kind of a, a cursory survey of the requirements for those libraries. And, you know, the standard uh, requirement is always just bring a photo ID with you and uh, something with your current mailing address on it. And that should be enough um, to get you cards at all those places. I was honestly surprised that other libraries um, haven't started adding this OBR feature um, just because it seems like it's very kind of pandemic friendly, like it's a good way to encourage patrons to still, you know, sign up for cards, access resources, but then not have to worry about, you know, going out to the library to do that stuff. Um, so it's it's interesting to be kind of, I guess, I don't, I would hesitate to call this a trend, but kind of a, an innovation. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not usually the case for for ACPL. So and it says here that you can use your the temporary for NC Live. Yeah. Well, and so really basically cool. it's it's you know we use LS2 um, as our kind of library management software. Um, so once your account is created in LS2, you're you're good to go, right? You should be able to access any resources that would require you to have a, a valid library card, uh, including NC Live. Awesome. Did you have other stuff to show? I think that's a lot. Um, yeah, did anyone have any other questions? I mean, if you want to go to Hoopla and just pull that well, up. Well, so I, can get I tried, but Hoopla knows my game a little too well um, because they make you have a different email address, <laughs> not just a different library card. 
So I have used every email address I have access to already nice. in Google and it won't let me do it again. But nice. if you're into, if you read comics, that's that's what I usually get through Hoopla. Um, they do have ebooks and audiobooks and even TV shows and stuff. Yeah, stuff they do. They do streaming movies or streaming as well, TV shows, movies, stuff like that. But I have mostly used it for comics, and they have a lot of new, um, like new comic releases, not like uh, single ones, but like collections and graphic novels and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, but they, I don't know any of my. <laughs> other accounts to get in there so they know they've figured me out yeah does anybody have any questions before we switch over to sam and feel free to put my email in the chat i will do that oh and it's live mm -hmm. so. all in word all right i'll turn it we'll turn it over to sam thank you Thank you. Yeah, it was a it was an honor to. I learned a lot. Um, Christine says that library and car policy that everyone can access anything is cool. Um, but it's only a parent can decide what is appropriate for their child. <laughs> Isn't that a novel it's, idea? It's recently, good, it's good legal boilerplate, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I like that boilerplate. Yeah. They they know what they're doing. Um, okay. I made a slide so just to really have the links and to cover what I was doing, um, but I thought since we, you know, Matt was so generous to talk about these public library cards, we could also um, talk about um, some other ways to like read for free or some other resources to kind of really get into reading. Uh, so Jenny, did you do like a whole novelist ULVLC? I meant to go look. Um, and, and I will say too, we have access to novelist plus. Uh, nice. So that should be, you should be able to access that through our uh, library catalog too. So oh, cool. Through NC Live. If yeah. you just through NC Live. Um, so yeah, I guess we so, get this through NC Live, right? Yeah, we, that's how we have access to it. Yeah. So there was one that um, Lois, Paola, and I did about like cool stuff you might not know about your library. And I did a little demo of Novelist, but I love it. I use it all the time. Yeah, so I'm not going to like, you know, harp on it. Jenny um, did it probably better than I would, but it's really nice. Like if you're like, oh, I'm into, um, you know, mysteries and you want to kind of see what's going on with mysteries, get recommendations. Um, you can set, you know, um, you know, preferences and things like that. But you can also like if you're just looking for inspiration, go to stuff like best adult fiction of 2022 and get lists and reviews and things like that. Um, it's again through the NC Live, so you can get it through um, the local public library, but it's also linked in our database page, like the link um, that's in this slideshow is from um, UNCG Libraries. Um, so, like maybe you want to read um, Legends and Lattes, but it only has a two star popularity, um, but then you can go in and see actual reviews too. Um, so we have a paper book collection. There's actually, um, you know, ROI uh, led by Rachel has started doing those like paperback displays sometimes. And then there's the paperback collection that's behind the new releases near the audiobooks. Um, so that is um, nice for some quick leisure reading. It has all kinds of genres and the popular um, formats. So uh, check that out. New releases over there. Um, I'm sure you all know about that. You can get ebooks through UNCG Libraries Catalog, but the reason we had Matt come is that you can get a whole lot more, as you see, through um, Libby and through having a public library card. So like when students come to the reference desk, we always tell them like, hey, get a public library card. Um, we recently did a, you know, whiteboard in the lobby where it was, um, you know, hey, do you have a public library card? If not, here's a link to go register for one. Um, so that is really usually where we direct patrons um, to go when they're looking for like, again, this kind of leisure reading for free. Um, Matt mentioned it, but like Libby has tons of audiobooks, but if you're into audiobooks or interested in audiobooks, Audible um, is, exists. But I have, I listen to tons of audiobooks and I have found that Audible is actually the worst deal. <laughs> like it is like, because you have to buy the audiobooks, you only get one per month unless they're running these like specials. Um, and then anything else you buy, you have to like pay for extra on top of like a $15 a month subscription. Um, so if you're interested in a subscription service of audiobooks, I would recommend looking at Libro FM or Scribed. Um, I think Scribed is cheaper than Audible and it has a huge collection, uh, particularly of audiobooks. Um, it does not have, it has, says it has ebooks, but they don't work on a Kindle. Um, you would have to read them like on your computer or a tablet. 
um, but um, they uh, uh, do have tons of audiobooks. And then Libro FM is like um, for your uh, local bookstore. So you can like hook it. So like if you wanted to hook to like Scuppernong, um, you can like, you know, you search for your local bookstore that you like, connect it to your app, and then you can buy, you know, audiobooks that you might want to listen to, but then the Scuppernong gets the profits, right? So it takes it away from Amazon, um, which as we know, Amazon probably doesn't need those profits. <laughs> um, so there's like a ton of different ways to listen to audiobooks for free. Um, and there, Jenny dropped the link for um, novelists. Thanks in the chat. So does anyone listen to audiobooks? Have any, um, I just like listen to probably like two or three audiobooks a week. So I have a lot of opinions on this. Um, but again, I get 90% of my audiobooks through um, Libby. And then um, I also get them through NetGalley, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. They do have an audiobook option. And then I have um, demoed and done a free trial of Scribed and really liked it. I just didn't want to, like, I already pay for other things. Uh, another one that has, um, we can talk about this in the um, social media aspect, but Kindle Unlimited also has um, audiobooks, but not as many as ebooks. They're mostly ebooks and a Kindle Unlimited subscription. Yeah, Kindle Unlimited. Uh, hey, Amy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay, cool. Any questions, comments about audiobooks? Again, this can be like interactive on a Friday afternoon talking about reading. I love to hear what people are reading. Um, so let me know. Uh, so next thing I talk about is NetGalley. Um, so um, who here has a Kindle? Um, so I know Jenny does. I know Amy does. <laughs> um, do other people have one? Um, in this room. If you don't, it's totally fine, but it just kind of changes how I kind of talk about that. So, okay, you have the app. Brown has one in my house. Uh, Sarah has one. Um, cool. So, a lot of what I'm going to talk about does work best on a Kindle, um, and I know, like, again, I'm acknowledging the, like, evil empire that is Amazon, but I will want to emphasize what um, Jenny said in that the Kindle has truly changed my life in terms of reading, like not to be an advertisement for a Kindle. But if you have a Kindle or something like a Kindle, they're all alternatives if you don't want to give um, Amazon your money in terms of an e-reader, um, is that they're just like uh, more accessible. They're really convenient. They're, um, you can like make the text larger, smaller, and then you can get access to something like NetGalley, which we're going to go over. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how NetGalley works um, without that, right? Um, but um, it's a lot easier with it. So I actually <laughs> love my Kindle so much that I bought a Kindle refurbished online, right? Um, so um, that is a way to save money on a Kindle. And then um, anytime I hear any sale on a Kindle, I go and get one. Um, so I have one <laughs> in my house because Target was running a $40 sale. So like I just have one, you know, sitting on my bookcase waiting in case this one breaks because like I can't, don't think I can go a day without my Kindle now. Um, so um, just like, you know, pay attention because like Target runs a lot of sales, Best Buy. Um, and then for $40, um, I feel like you're going to make that money back just with like these kind of things um, if you're really a true, um, you know, if you start reading a lot. Okay, so NetGalley is where publishers go to um, promote their advanced reading copies. Um, so it's the way that publishers promote their digital review copies. So they're like preprint, right? Like if you ever like work with preprints. Um, and the idea is that they are given to book advocates and industry professionals. That's us. We're librarians. Um, so if you have an ALA card, um, I, you know, a membership to ALA, I highly recommend putting that in. There is a part in your profile um, to do that. Um, so uh, take advantage of it. Uh, there's tons on there. And so if you have like an author that you really like, right, and that you know that they have a book coming out in like fall 2023, you know, you could go here and get their um, advanced reading copy ahead of time to do that. So I um, accidentally, <laughs> um, and Amy points out, you can send yours back and get a credit for an upgrade. Yes, um, Washergate. Yes, Amy uh, put her Kindle through a washing machine when she first got it, but um, she's still thriving in the reading, <laughs> reading world, so don't worry. Um, okay. So I know Jenny and Amy have NetGalley, and I think that's it. So I think it is worth it for me to demo it, right? So I have a link here, and I'll drop it in the chat if y'all want to um, 
register, anyone can register. Um, so there's tons of stuff online. If you Google, like how to get the most advanced reading copies, um, I do none of those things. I just input my ALA card and I keep up with reviews and that's it. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, that's how I do it. So when you click on this register, you're going to lot, you know, create all the stuff, right? And it tells you some stuff about like being a book advocate, that kind of thing. So once you sign up, when you set up your profile, that's where you're going to link to your ALA membership card if you have one. Um, I think it's just ALA, not NCLA. Um, sorry. Um, but um, if you don't have one, that's fine. You can still sign up for this. It's not a requirement. Um, I have just found that I get most of the ARCs I request, whereas when I research online, um, a lot of people, if they're not librarians or connected to the like book industry in a way that like a librarian might be, they, they don't, you know, they might get denied more. Um, I have, of course, gotten denied for advanced reading copies, but um, that is how it uh, works. Uh, yeah, Jenny said that uh, she's been rejected. I've been rejected, um, but I have found that I get rejected. I, also, though, like I got that arc that Amy got rejected for. So like, I don't quite understand how they always do it. Um, they say it's also based on your statistics of review, um, but we'll see. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a second um, just so that y'all don't see my like login um, in case that's like a thing. And I'm gonna bring up my NetGalley on another um, browser. Um, I think I'm good. Um, and so you can kind of see how it looks on the back end um, once you sign up. No private information will be shared, I don't think. So this is how NetGalley looks. Um, so it looks a lot like any kind of book repository. Um, so this is my profile. I don't know how to fix this, and I don't really care enough. <laughs> but there's an upside sideways picture. Um, but one of the things I read online is that um, feedback ratio on NetGalley does matter. Um, so feedback ratio is that when you get these advanced reading copies, they do ask for you to review the copies. So your ratio is how many you have requested versus how many you have reviewed, right? Sent to your Kindle and reviewed. If you don't have a Kindle, um, you can get digital copies, right? So this would be through the NetGalley app. They have an app that you can put on a tablet um, or your phone. So you could read on your phone if that's cool. And then here is the um, digital copy, right? That you could read on a computer. Um, so if you don't have a Kindle, it's totally possible. Um, I just say that my experience is fully on a Kindle. Like I got a Kindle and then I signed up for NetGalley like the next week. Uh, Jenny taught me how to do it. Credit, credit to Jenny. <laughs> it's like, show me the NetGalley magic. Um, so um, this is my shelf. So when I request, if you want to find a book, right, you can just go in and um, search, right, based on author, um, title, ISB. So to find titles, you go here to find titles. And like I'm looking for, um, there's one coming up from um, Denise Williams that I've been like stalking. Right. And I don't think it's out yet, but like I can go here and look at an author who I like and see like, OK, well, like the one I'm looking for is here, but she has one coming out in March. Um, and here's the previous ones. You can't get ones that are previous unless you ask them. Uh, they archive them by certain dates, which is typically around the publication date. Usually they give you a little bit of wee leeway, a couple of weeks. Um, but around the publication date, they'll like archive it and say no more free um, advanced reading copies. You got to you got to buy it online. Um, so you can set up in your dashboard also like, you know, what kind of books you like. So like I have my categories as uh, these. Um, I really mostly read fiction. Um, but you, of course, if you don't, you can set it up to have memoirs, nonfiction, all kinds of things. And then once they kind of know you, right, like and they know your categories, they'll like recommend you titles based on your categories. You'll also get emails, you know, saying, hey, we've noticed that you like this author, you know, they have a new book coming out. Would you like to review it? And I like that feature a lot. I don't have it turned off because I'm like, oh, good. I do want to know when the authors that I follow and like um, have new books coming out. Um, so if you want to um, give a review, which I do recommend, um, they don't have to be super long. I think it's like a hundred word limit, um, you know, so it can be really short, pretty brief reviews. Um, you're when you're you send it to your Kindle, right, or you send it to wherever you're reading it from. And then like this is the ones I've sent to my Kindle. So when I'm done, I click on it and I can say give feedback. Um, I am not going to give feedback on this book because there is a HarperCollins um, strike going on right now. And they're asking people to withhold reviews on strikes in solidarity with the um, strikers. So personally for me, I'm not doing that right now. Um, so this will just live in here <laughs> um, until I guess HarperCollins, uh, if they ever resolve their situation of paying their workers a livable wage.
but you can see here, right? Like I do it by month. Like I do it, like I send it like the month before. So here's all my March ones, but you can see I have um, tons of stuff coming up for April, May and beyond. Um, so I just asked for the Chloe Lee's book, I think yesterday. And then I got an email this morning saying it was available. And then some publishers I like and heart, right? Um, and then they send me the ARCs immediately when I request them. Are there any questions about NetGalley? Do Ginny and Amy want to talk about your experiences? Did I miss anything on the basic view of NetGalley? I'm requesting all the ones that you have on your list. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've tried to chill out with NetGalley, but like, I don't I know. I didn't know there was a Christina Lauren in there, so there's thank a Christina you Christina Lauren coming out. There's an Allie Hazelwood. Uh, there's a Martha Waters. Uh, she went to, uh, she's a librarian. Um, Emily Henry. <laughs> Uh, you can tell what kind of books I like to read. Ooh, another Alexander Bellafleur. Nice. Yep. I didn't know that either. You have time, Amy. April. Yeah, so <laughs> this, is, this is part of the problem, though, um, that Sam and Sam was uh, sort of uh, referencing this. Um, I have, like, no impulse control on that galley because I'm like, these are free. <laughs> this is great. Like, um, like, and, I, and I'm like, oh, that looks even, like, 10% interesting to me. I request it. And then I will find myself getting kind of backed up on doing reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and so then that can impact your percentage. I've done so many now that my percentage does stay pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, some, sometimes you can go a little wild. In yeah, that. I mean, I've done 104. Um, and then you can see how many I have on my shelf and how many I are waiting to give feedback. Like, I think it's about 20. And I'm still at like an 85% ratio. And I mean, if you read the blogs online about how to best get approved on NetGalley, they tell you like you need to stay above an 80%. But of course, if you first sign up, you know, you're going to be at 0%, right? And um, it just takes a little bit to build that up. But I would say don't give up. And uh, if you're into reading in this way, um, and again, I think it's, I would start with the public library card first. This is if for people who are like, um, you know, that read a lot and are like, oh, I want, you know, again, these advanced reading copies. Um, many times I think like, oh, I should be more like Amy and just like request a book once in a while. But it's just like once you get on this platform, they're like recommending things to you um, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to click, 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 click. Like it's just so easy to click and then you get approved. Um, I didn't want to point out my last thing about this is that you can um, also get audiobooks. So if you're into audiobooks, um, anyone who is, you can get advanced, they're called advanced listening copies. Um, and then the way you listen to them is you download a NetGalley app. Um, and then so then you send it to the app and then you listen. So if anyone listens to audiobooks, it works pretty much the exact same way as Libby. Um, you can make it go faster, slower, um, skip chapters, um, that kind of thing. Um, you know, once in a while with any advanced reading copies, because it's not the final, um, you're going to find more typos. And similar with the advanced listening copies, you might find some kind of weird glitches, but to, it works fine. Um, and the typos like don't bother me. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so the way they also say to fit, get your ratio up is with social media, uh, particularly Goodreads. Um, and they um, really, when they're talking about book advocates, are also talking about how big um, books have gotten on social media these days. Um, and I do have a slide on that if anyone has any questions or is interested. Um, again, I think the only reason I get approved, I, what I've told myself in my brain, is that I do the reviews and I um, am a librarian. Like I have an ALA number. Um, I do, I'm an ALA member. Um, so I think that makes a difference. Because I've heard of people online like getting rejected for all kinds of things. And they're like huge bloggers, you know, or whatever. Um, so I think if you have an ALA card, I do think that makes a difference. Because um, they'll ask me like, would your library buy this? And I'm like, I don't have any purchasing power, but sure, <laughs> you know, so um, that kind of thing. Um, okay, are there any questions about NetGalley? I feel like I probably talked about it too long. It's just a cool thing. And again, even if you don't read a lot, like if there's like one author you like, right? Like you could get their advanced reading copy on here for free. Free, free, free. This is all free. No money involved. Yes. So, um, um, so the reviews show up to the publishers, right, um, on the back end. I think they tell you that when you sign up, Terry. Um, I can go back and look at my reviews. So, like, um, you can go to um, Feedback Sent um, and say View Feedback. Um, and, um, oh, I guess it just shows me Sent. But you can also, like, let's say you want to, um, like, uh, 
I'll just go to find titles. And let's say I want to read, um, I don't want to read Rich Whiteman, sorry. <laughs> um, but let's say I want to read this. I can click read now, right, and get it. But you can also click on the title, um, see full details, and it shows you um, your um, that, but then you can go into reviews and you can see all the reviews that are in there. So I guess there's no reviews written about this, but usually you go down here and all the reviews are on the bottom. Um, so let's go um, here. Like I bet people have already reviewed this. See, like you can see that. Um, this is like a pretty famous romance writer. So you can see like advanced praise. Um, additions, average, see people have already rated it, so you can go into the all member reviews. So my reviews do show up here. Sometimes, um, this, I mean, my, this my, I, sometimes I like go in to look at something and uh, uh, I'll see Jenny's review. I'll be like, there's Jenny Librarian, because, you know, I mean, I know that's her like username, and so I like, I can see like, oh, there's what Jenny said about this book if, if we're reading the same advanced reading copy. I do, I, I do put my reviews on Goodreads, but like, I don't have like a big presence on Goodreads. I just do that because I feel like it's nice to the publisher. Um, and I only do it for reviews that are like, that I give it a really good review, um, like four or five stars. Okay, well, the last part of this presentation, let's see is like social media and reading, right, which also can be a way to track your reading. Um, the two big ones out there right now are Goodreads and Storygraph. Um, so Goodreads is, um, you know, the um, big one, right, like, uh, and it's owned by Amazon. So again, an alternative has popped up called Storygraph um, that is similar to um, Goodreads. You can write reviews, look up books, things like that. Um, but it's not quite as public and it gives it um, more of a space of like it really being a community versus like, um, I don't know, sometimes Goodreads can get pretty vicious, um, if that's the right word, or like, um, I don't know, it can get wild. Um, one of my favorite social media accounts to follow online is called Goodreads Reviews, and it's all one-star reviews of books, and I mean, it is wild what people say about books, and it's all like, a lot of it's like good books, <laughs> you're like, why would you give this one star? Um, so there's just all kinds of things like that on Goodreads. Oh, and I didn't even change the description here. You can see I just threw in a link to Goodreads and Storygraph nothing to do with Mercury or Mars. Um, so Storygraph, I did want to show this real fast because it's become kind of popular as an alternative to Goodreads. If you're like, I don't like the vibe at Goodreads. I don't like that it's owned by Amazon. Um, they also try, like you can, it hooks to your Kindle and maybe people don't like that. You can turn that off on your Kindle if you end up getting a Kindle. Um, but this is how it looks. And then one of the really nice things I like about Storygraph is they give you analytics. So they give you um, uh, insights and stats. So like if you like look at it over a year and you're using it and like inputting what you're reading, they'll tell you like, oh, like you've read a lot of like lighthearted stuff, but like I can tell towards the end you were dipping into like more dark <laughs> or whatever. They can tell you that kind of insight. So maybe you could think about, you know, again, reading goals, things that you like and don't like about the trends, et cetera. So it's kind of nice. Um, also, again, um, they do a better job of recommend, recommending, I guess, than Goodreads. I mean, Goodreads is based on algorithms. They're going to recommend you stuff, but they really do more of a feed, right? You follow people. It's more social. This, you can follow people on Storygraph, but because not as many people um, use Storygraph, they really rely more on their um, machine learning AI, right, to recommend you things, recommend you um, people who read similar things to you and so on. Um, they also have content warnings, and Goodreads does not. They hide spoilers, and you have to really, like, look through the reviews for content warnings. Um, if you're like me and just, you know, content warnings are important to you, um, this is a really good place to go and sign up because they have a category for content warnings, and, like, you click on it, and it shows you it for every book, right? But then um, you don't necessarily have to look at it. It's not forcing you to look at the content warnings if, you're, um, if you think that they're spoilers. Yeah, so Jenny said, I stopped adding reviews to Goodreads because people can be so me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's a bad vibe sometimes, <laughs> like on Goodreads, I think, uh, but yeah. But like, you know, I could, I think I follow Jenny and Amy on Goodreads, but like, you know, like y'all could follow me and Jenny and, you know, wherever, you know, that is a nice thing about Goodreads. You can kind of see what your friends are reading. That is how it originally came up. You can do that on Storygraph too. It's just because it's not as big, 
Um, it's more, again, more about this like preferences and trends and kind of tracking your read. It's more tracking driven. But Goodreads does do those like reading um, goals and that's nice. And then they give you that like year end review. I like that. Um, but also, again, so to story graph anytime you want. Um, OK, the last thing is just like there's tons of forms of social media that are into books now. Books, books are hot. So I took some screenshots of different examples. I mean, in 2023, if you have an author you like, you can follow them on whatever form of social media they like. And then a lot of times what that means is if you follow these authors, they'll tell you when books are coming out so you can get advanced reading copies. They'll also give you codes for discounts on their books on Amazon. Um, a lot of times if you follow them on social media and then there's tons of people who like review books, right? Like that is their jam. And then they put it all on like an Instagram account or a Twitter account or a book, um, a TikTok account. Um, the trend on TikTok is book talk. And that is uh, very hot right now. I am an old and don't quite like understand how to navigate all of book talk. It's just like kind of overwhelming to me. And like, I feel like every time I look at it, it's like a 21 year old recommending me something. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like, if that's where I'm at in my life right now. Um, but yeah, like Amy pointed out, like uh, an author I like is posting a serial of her latest book, one chapter per day on Facebook. So yeah, I follow all the authors that I like love. And again, I've gotten tons of like, deals on them. I know them when their advanced reading copies are coming out. Um, they get discount codes. They do giveaways um, of their books, signed copies. Then you can also tell when they're coming into town. Um, we're lucky enough to be near bookmarks. So like, you know, they could be doing a virtual event, an in-person event, like all kinds of things. Um, so definitely tap into those kind of communities um, if that is something you're into. Um, you know, my interest is in fiction, particularly um, romance fiction, but like there is a community for you, <laughs> no matter what you like, there is a community online for you. Um, so just take advantage of it. And I think that's it. Um, so, you know, like I wanted, um, I feel like we don't, you know, we have plenty of time if anyone wants to ask um, any questions or share anything you're reading. Um, is Matt still here? If Matt Matt's still here if you want to ask him more questions about public libraries. Um, so yeah. Like I said, I, yeah, bye, Sarah. Um, I, um, Matt asked me to unmute. He has something. I was just going to say, I did a poor job of talking about um, if you're looking to check out physical items um, at ACPL, it's a 100 item limit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and then there are limits on like DVDs and Lucky Day books and stuff like that. But just in case anyone gets the urge to take a road trip and get their library card this weekend. Or if you're Christine and lives in Burlington, just go go down the road. Oh, Christine, I hope you already have an Alamance County Public Library's card. Yeah, I think Christine does. Uh... I have, I believe it. Um, Brown threw out a link to Quellridge Books, one of my favorite stores, uh, the event page. I mean, I think that's another thing. We didn't harp on this, but like local bookstores have tons of things going on nowadays. Um, also virtual. Like I think bookstops in my experience have done a good job of continuing doing virtual, offering both um, options. Um, I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them. So, you know, again, like what Matt was pointing out, if you, um, you know, need a virtual option, um, want to do hybrid, maybe like don't feel good one week, but still want to see an author talk. Um, a lot of times they are offered online, like Bookmarks does a lot of their author talks for like, they, they have a, a, what is it, Love at First Sight or something, Love Book Club. Um, and all of the author talks are virtual. And then they do like in-person events sometimes when they bring an author in for the stuff. So you can get both, whatever you prefer. Um, I know I saw Christine at Bookmarks when I went there with my kids, um, so I know Christine knows about Bookmarks, um, and they're a great um, resource, yeah, like, they're a really good resource to have, and that's, like, I've seen tons of author talks in the last year, both virtual and in person, and, like, they brought in a lot of great authors, like, and, and very, like, diverse, like, you know, I mean, like, you all know, I read mostly, like, fiction, romance, but, like, they brought in tons of stuff, like, they just did that movable feast thing, um, yeah, and it was like really diverse authors and looked really good. Great panels. Yeah, I went to the only panel I went to was that one on romance at that one, but it was really good. Um, I always am looking for audiobook recommendations. So thank you, um, Amy, on How Y'all Doing by Leslie Jordan. Um, so thank you. Um, oh my God, I, he's adorable and I love him. Yeah, okay. I can believe it. Um, <laughs> bye, Christine. Bye, Christine. Um,
I know Christine reads a lot, so I'm glad she was here. Um, yeah. I am like not good at like getting into book clubs, but as much as I read and talk about books, like my mom, like mom, you know, she's always like, go get a book club. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I know I should, but it's hard. Uh, bye. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah. Any other comments? Concerns? <laughs> they must all be going to the same meeting. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, I was like, everyone's going to be, <laughs> there must be a meeting. Any, um... uh, I bet it's collection something collection oh right. there must be that database i think it's the database team i don't know whatever um, i don't know is it do i have to be in this meeting i hope not i, hope not. <laughs> I don't think i have anything on my calendar um so yeah anything else anyone else in the room want to share any stories about reading any tips or tricks that we missed um i mean i i've always loved reading but the pandemic really like pushed i am like a heavy reader now like i it's a very, it's a huge source of joy for me. Do you read a lot, Matt? I know Jenny reads a lot. Not really. Yeah, I, Terry. I, I used to, but. I have a question about the Libby app. Um, I've loaded it on my iPhone and I have it on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And when I read it on my iPhone, it doesn't update my place in a book on my iPad. Is that just. Um, give it a second. It What's that? Um, did you do it like immediately? Like you're talking about testing it today or like this happens all the time to you? No. Well, I apparently don't have time to read as much as all of you do. But when, <laughs> when I when I find a book, you know, through the Digital Library of North Carolina that, um, you know, I finally get from the waiting list and I read it, you know, when I'm standing in line at the grocery store or whatever, and then I get home and I pull up my iPad and read it, I have to go find where I'm at or where I finished on my iPhone. And I don't know if there's any tips about that. I would think that it would sync it, but it doesn't seem to do that. For yeah, me. it's I, supposed to. It's supposed, it's supposed to, to, yeah. Okay. So Ter Terry, how many, I'm trying to think, would, would you, when you're in Libby, are you are you signed in? What's I'm trying to think because it may have something to do with the card that's associated with the Libby account. Um, possibly, is that? It, hmm. It's usually the Greensboro Public Library card. Okay, so it's the same card and on both devices then. Yes. That's, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll look, that's. I'll look at it and see. Maybe there's some setting I have to put in there. I mean, my I, only experience with anything like that is the Kindle app, you know, like sometimes I'll like read what I have on my Kindle, like what, like you, like Terry, what you said, like reading online or stuff. Um, but like when I go to my Kindle, it, like at home and open it, it will say like, we see you've been reading on another device. Do you want to go there? Um, yeah, I just, I just, found, I mean, I only did a quick Google search, but I put in something from Libby Health. But there's probably more detailed stuff that's out there. But that, okay. would, oh, that would annoy me so much. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, would annoy it me kind too. Of, it kind of like, defeats the purpose of yeah. the convenience of it, right? I mean, if, if it's not keeping track and you're having to, like, scroll forward or whatever to get to where you were, yeah, that's that's one of the major features of reading on any device is yeah. the fact that it remembers where you stopped. Or it should, right? Right. I'll go back and look. Thanks. This was really helpful. Appreciate it. Bye, Anna. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um.